so, but it was full of, I remember just playing. You know how kids don't play? I remember playing. I'm such a 90s child, you know, late 80s baby. Growing up, actually playing on bikes. And uh, my favorite story is like playing. One day my dad must have been fixing his car or something. And so it's super dark, but we're out there playing it. And so, but we knew as soon as the, as soon as the sun went down, everybody was like, go put on black. <laughs> and there's like a neighborhood for the kids wearing black, hiding in bushes. You would never see that now. You know, there's just too many dangers now. And New Orleans in the 90s was not pretty, but you know, we made it pretty. It made, and then, you know, everybody's on one block. Everyone knows each other's names, you know. A neighborly residential area, uh, you know, a lot, some artsy. Um, of course, French Quarter, and then you, behind the French Quarter is, is Maroney, and, and that's another artsy community. Behind there is Bywater, and a lot of lofts and condos there. A lot of Brooklyn has moved in. Every neighborhood, the, the neighbors love each other, and people don't want to move anywhere else. Yeah. A lot of people didn't come back. A lot didn't. I, mean, I, I, I could be off. You didn't want to come no. back? Why didn't you want to come back? I knew it was going to be pre-civil rights. I knew it was going to be pre-civil rights? You know, pre -civil fight. Rights you know to fight for everything you wanted. Because when you, when you looked at what was taking place after we left, the land grab by the Canazarians and the, the, the rumors that Donald Trump was invested in the Ninth War, and then they, they, they lied about the, the project one for one, people that stayed in the project, they lied to them, told them that they was going to be one person that lived in the project prior to the storm was going to get their apartment back. But they also, they were going to get a job. They changed the rule. Rebuilding their house. They, they changed the rule because you got a convicted felon in your house, which 95% of them had a child that had been in jail. You couldn't come back. And it, the ones that tried to come back, the rent was too high. So they changed the so rent? They, so, it's, yeah, so it's, explain that to me because I heard they're trying to do like this mixed income thing. Yeah, it, it yeah. ain't working. What's, what isn't working the about it? Is, what are they trying to do? What is prior it to Prior to the storm, people was paying, the max was they were paying was like 350 in the project. That's when you had a job. You were paying like 350 Now, that's double. Okay. So a lot of people but can't the pay. But the job opportunities the Job opportunities, not, no, no. It's like you raise the rent, but you want to keep us at seven dollars an hour. So that means you're gonna push us out to where? You pushing them to the suburbs, which is where I, I used to live. And my dad is actually very pissed about this uh, uh, because his property value has dropped. Because now we have Section Eight houses popping up. Because there's no actual housing projects to put them in, they go into individual houses. So a person can buy that house and rent it out for Section Eight, and it drops my father's property value down. So he's like, holy shit. Like, so it's just affecting everyone. It cleaned out, not only that storm clean out all the projects and have them rebuild to give people here a more substantial standard of living, right? But the school system gives all the children here a more stand, substantial standard of education and they don't have to pay for it. Because I know what I hear, what my real estate or my buyer's agent told me is if you have two nickels to rub together, because if you have two nickels together, they get rubbed together and you live in Orleans Parish, you send your kids to private school. If I wanted to live here, the opportunity has been stripped. I can't live here. You can't live in? I can't live in New Orleans. In the actual parish? Yeah. Uh, Rise of Charter Schools, uh, Education for Profit, School to Prison Pipeline, that's New Orleans. And I can't do that to any legacy that I leave through my children. One. Two, I'm probably not gonna get paid as much in New Orleans anyway anymore. It's at least not enough to afford a life. That's not gonna happen. So I'm at an impasse at 26 years old where I have to figure out, cause I can't necessarily leave unless the money's right, but I can't stay because the money isn't right. So I'm dealing with that. That's my schism, and I feel like that's what most people in my generation's schism is. I see mostly only good. There was, there was no thought about advancement too much. Not, not, not people or job advancement, but even doing anything culturally in the city. Now it's unbelievable. 
I mean, there we have blossomed. We have blossomed. We're a whole new world. Let's come here and immerse ourselves in a culture. I don't like the conquistador attitude. And that's what I feel like it is. Or Columbusing. That's what I like to call it now, Columbusing. Because they come here and they discover shit. <laughs> and they discovered it. No, the shit's been here. <laughs> now all of a sudden you're, but why? Why? And you know what? New Orleans is interesting because you know they like that slogan, the new New Orleans. Who is this shit actually for? I'm in the face of gentrification. You know, I'm not, maybe not me, I'm 46 years old at this date, right? Maybe in the face of gentrification are the kids that are 28 to 34 right now that are like getting out of college and maybe have a, a few bucks to together or maybe didn't go to college and put some things together somewhere else and just decided to go for it. Or, as my title brand said, Mr. Daryl in the West Bank, Mr. Daryl said he's dealing with a lot of kids that are trust fund kids from the Pacific Northwest. You know, all our, um, all our, uh, uh, they call them gutter punks, or um, not so much that maybe the hipsters, the hipsters is an older mm -hmm. gutter punk. Um, the hipsters, they're coming down here and the parents can buy them a house here and give them a project, right? Easy. And, and, and the culture is cool, you know? Um, I'm, just, uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of it. You should just make it easier for the people who've lived here before Katrina and who are trying to maintain to maintain. I don't, because what you're going to end up doing is losing, what New Orleans is going to end up doing is losing its culture that it's praised for. And they're going to wonder where it went. <laughs> and it went with all the black people that left here. Because all the people who are coming here, true, they can partake in it, but they don't know how to carry it on. That's just something we know. Uh, so, no. Uh, New Orleans is going to wake up one day and really be like, there are no second lines outside. <laughs> what, what happened? And it's going to be because of all this bullshit that they've muddled on a community that, that loves this place. Like, my grandmother would never leave. You know, my grandmother grew up on a, literally grew up in a two block radius her whole life until she moved to Gentilly. And then she's been there since after Betsy. You know, she's never gonna leave New Orleans. And I know she's getting up in age, but that's the type of people who've raised us to never leave. But if the opportunities aren't available for my generation, we will. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's gonna be like issues. That. But I won't go home to the same size house and drive off in the same car you got. I want my school, my kids to go to school with yours. Right. And I won't have the same amount of money you got. You could dance with me, let me live like that too. Let me live like you and dance and party with you. I'll dance even harder. <laughs> if I got some money and I got some stability in my life.